The UFC returns to the UK for the first time this year, and it's a prime time party at the O2 in London. In the main event, UK's own Leon Rocky Edwards looks to make the first defense of his welterweight belt against the familiar four, the Nigerian nightmare, Kamaru Usman. Plus, two of the most exciting lightweights in MMA, as the highlight Justin Gaethje faces off against rising star Rafael Fiziev. UFC 286 goes down live on Saturday night. The prelims are live at 7 p.m. on BT Sport 1 and YouTube, with the main card exclusive to BT Sport box office from 9 p.m. Welcome to Fight Week here on BT Sport. It's your official preview for UFC 286. And as you can see, we're not in our basements. <laughs> we're not in our outhouse. We're at the UFC Apex to preview this immense card taking place in London's O2 Arena. I'm Adam Catterall. Pleasure as always to be in your company and a pleasure to be in the company of these two. The one and only Mr Nick Pete and the Hall of Famer himself, Mr Michael Bispin. Oof. Who, by the way? was the last man to headline oh. a UK-numbered event. Yeah, I was. Thank you, Adam. I feel very old now. Um, <laughs> yeah, 2016, UFC 204, Dan mm. Henderson. What a night that was. Uh, six o'clock in the morning, I think I made the ring walk, something like that, 5.30 a.m. But the fans did not disappoint. The British crowd never does. And I can't wait for this event because when Leon Edwards makes that walk, it is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Obviously, a sign of British MMA and where we're at right now, Nick. Obviously, we've got a champion, hence having a number card on, on British soil. Yep. But also... A stack card as well, full of British talent. That's the most amazing thing about it. You know, this is what you hope will happen when you get a champion that in the next generation comes through the door behind you. And that's exactly what this card reflects for me. Loads of British talent making their debut, big opportunities for them, guys who are closing their on title opportunities, rankings within various weight classes. Absolutely sensational. And Unlike with Michael, we have to stay up till five in the morning. <laughs> it's yeah, on Mike. UK prime time as well. Time. UK prime time. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of that, it is UK prime time. The prelims get going from 7 p.m. available for you on BT Sport 1 and the BT Sport YouTube channel. And then, of course, the main card gets going from 9 on BT Sport box office. More information on that at bt.com slash sport box office. Go and get stuck into it. Now then, are you ready, boys? Oh. Are you ready to sprinkle this? Because the, the main event is absolutely sensational. Part three between Leon Edwards and Kamaru Usman. We all know what happened in part two. Pound for pound, I won't say the rest, but you know. This is set up for an epic, epic fight. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, Kamaru Usman, a long-time champion. People saying that he was, you know, the new... Greatest welterweight of all time, shall we say. The Gwalt. Yeah. Uh, but but Leon Edwards put that to bed in round five last time. A beautiful left high kick, knocked him out cold, sent him to the shadow realm. One shot, kill shot, whatever you want to call it. So coming into this one, Kamara Usman, you know, yeah, of course he's going to be fired up. Yeah, he wants to get his belt back. But he's, is he going to be gun shy? He's never been knocked out unconscious before. I would assume that he's going to be okay and he's going to come into this uh, an even better version of himself last time because he knows what he has to do. Let's be honest, in that first fight, uh, sorry, the second fight, pardon me, rounds two, three, and four were tough. The first round was amazing for Leon Edwards. He says he got tired. Uh, they were at Salt Lake City. Obviously, it was at altitude. Uh, Leon kind of slowed down a little bit, but then in round five, I mean, what a knockout. So he's got to stop the wrestling. Can he keep this fight on the feet? If he can keep it on the feet, if he can keep a distance, he's got a good chance of knocking him out. There's, there's loads of questions now around this because we've got a guy in Leon Edwards, and you, you could probably speak a little bit further on this, but Nick, I'll come to you on it. He was the hunter. Yeah. He was the hunter for such a long period of time, waiting patiently. Now he's the hunted. Different type of mentality in preparation for this one. It is, but I think he's going to absolutely rise to the occasion because he waited so long, like longer than most title opportunities. Yeah. He was knocking on that door forever and a day, it felt like, right through the pandemic. He was removed from the ratings at one stage, got put back in, finally gets his opportunity out in Salt Lake City and grabs it with both hands. Yes, it was dramatic, but it was always going to be dramatic with Leon. He was never going to go in there and just land a big shot like Mike did and take the title away because his journey's been up and down and left and right. It's been crazy. So he appreciates that just spending time with Leon now. He's like, this is where I'm meant to be. This is what I was meant to do. And this was always going to be my journey. It's incredible. And his confidence is absolutely sky high. I spoke to him recently and he firmly believes he's going to knock him out again. He, I mean, I don't know how he feels no pressure, but he was all smiles. And whenever he talks about the fight, he is so confident and so... Uh, he believes in himself so much, and rightly so. I mean, he knocked him out cold last yeah. time, but it ain't going to be easy. It's going to be a tough fight. It really is. 
there's no old ad- adage, isn't there? He won, and let's be honest, he won on not his best night. He, he wasn't yeah, yeah. 100%. It wasn't the greatest performance ever from Leon Edwards. He won on not his best night, which probably is giving him confidence coming into the, this one because he knows he can be better. Yeah, well, of course, because Salt Lake City, the altitude, he talked about that, about how you know how it affected him, how he slowed down. You know, a lot changes for this one. Kamari Usman coming in, yeah, okay, he lost last time. Uh, he got knocked out, so there's an issue. Now he's going to be the first person walking out. It's, the show isn't built around him. It's built around Leon Edwards. You know, and he's not used to that. Kamaru also, I, f- I forget how old he's off the top of my head. 35. 35. 35. So well, he's an old 35. Yeah. Because even though they've pretty much got identical professional MMA records, you've got to take into account that Kamaru has been wrestling at an incredibly yep. high level in college for a long time. There's a lot of miles on those uh, And he's made a lot legs. of money. Yeah. He's very famous now. He's branching out into doing movies and things like that. Is he taking his eye off the target? Because if he is, if he is, he's going to lose this fight. That's for sure. And he's coming off surgery. As well. Yeah. That's the, why there's been a delay. Obviously, this happened in the middle of last year when they had their second fight and Leon become champion. We've had this delay because, obviously, kamari has been out fixing his hand. Exactly. And, and again, you know, there's a lot of miles on that clock. And I don't know how, how long Kamaru's going to be around for, depending on who you speak to around him. One fight, two fights, three fights. I'm not saying he's looking for the exit himself, but I think his body's going to break down. It reminds me a little bit of Cain Velasquez in the heavyweight division. Mm. Looked like he was going to dominate forever. Big talk about him being the greatest heavyweight of all time. And then suddenly one day he woke up and his body just couldn't do it no more. I think we're going to get the same thing with Kamaru Usman. Is it now? Is this the time? Has Leon timed it perfectly? Or has he got a couple of other big, huge performances in him? But where's Kamaru Usman? We haven't seen him. He's not doing interviews. He's locked away. He's in Colorado. He's training at elevation himself. Very, very high. Higher than Salt Lake City. Not doing interviews because he's so focused on this fight. Because as I said a moment ago, he's a big celebrity now. But with you lose the belt, you lose the celebrity status almost. You know what I mean? That's his cachet. He is the champion of the world. He's the dominant welterweight champ. He got knocked out cold. He wants that back. He wants his pride more than anything. He wants to prove that he can beat Leon Edwards. On top of all the money and everything else, it's pride, man against man, yeah. inside an octagon, and it is going to be ridiculous. These guys have had the best part of eight rounds together yep. in the UFC. Kamaru's won the most of those rounds. Yeah, he has. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he should be taking confidence from that situation. Listen, it wasn't a lucky shot. It was a setup shot. We all know that. But in his head, psychologically, preparing for this fight, he could be saying to himself, I'd won that fight, and it's just one shot that yep. put me on my backside. 100%. For Kamaru Usman, if I'm coaching him, I just say, wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. But wrestling's very tiring. you yeah. know. And every time you enter and you're trying to get a hold of Leon, you could walk onto a knee, an elbow, punch, kick, whatever it is. But the game plan's pretty simple. Rounds two, three, and four, Salt Lake City, repeat that. Stick to him like glue. So his conditioning's going to be ridiculous. He's going to grapple him right from the opening bell. Well, he's going to be all the way out and all the way in. But when he's going, he's going to go hard. All that matters, though, when you think about those eight rounds, let's be honest. Only one round matters. Round number five in Salt Lake City. It doesn't matter how you start, it's how you finish. And it finishes with him the, lying, exactly. unconscious, staring up at the stars, knocked out cold with his eyes open. And I love Kamara Usman. That sounds disrespectful. No, but he's a mean. But he was unconscious with his eyes open. Yeah. And that... I didn't know the, you could even do that. That is the, <laughs> that is the overriding factor here in terms of... Kamaru's mentality, that's why he's hiding away. That's why he's focused like never before. He's working harder than ever before because Mm. he doesn't want that to happen again. But he's carrying that and he'll carry that into the octagon. He might say the opposite, but he will carry that into the octagon in London. He'll be terrified of that happening again. But whereas Leon, he carries that into the octagon. He's now seven foot tall. His chest's out because he knows he can hurt him. Kamaru Usman has never seriously hurt Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards sent him to the shadow realm. And Kamaru's going to be standing there in the middle of the octagon, when Leon makes his walk, the crowd's going to go absolutely insane, yeah. right? And he, he's not used to that. What's that like it, as it, the it, defending little, champion to walk out? It's a little out. different. No, you what's know? it like for, from Leon's point of view, walking oh, out as the defending it's champion? It's the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that is what dreams are made of. It exactly. really is. As, as a fighter, when you start when you're a kid or you realise that you can fight and you dream and you allow yourself to dream and go there and think about walking out into these huge stadiums like the O2 Arena and, you know, you're the champion of the world. You're in your home country. The crowd are going mental. Oh, man, I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just hear Blur, oh, Blur kicks off, that yeah, drum beat yeah, yeah. kicks off in the background and away you walk, oh, man. Oh, mate, listen, it's going to be a... It's going to be a, spe- a special evening. It yeah. really is. But that's all set. Uh, that's all well and good. Mm-hmm. Once the fight starts, you're on autopilot. Correct. You know what I mean? And Kamaru is really good at wrestling. Leon's really good at striking. I don't think Leon's going to stand with him because he knows. 
he can't win that battle. He got knocked out because round five. Kamara's going to. Kamara's not going to stand with Leon. Kamara's not going to stand with Leon. No yeah. way. No way. If I'm coaching him, I'm saying you just wrestle. You wrestle. Never mind the crowd. Mm -hmm. Never yeah. mind how much they're booing. Silence. You them. just try Come and take back. him down and hold him down and try and beat the living hell out of him. From Leon's point of view, though, on that, he's got to take confidence from round number one at Salt Lake City, then, hasn't he? Yeah. Because from a grappling exchange, he did extremely well. And his his <laughs> blame from two, three, and four would be altitude. I ran out of gas. Yeah. There is no altitude at the O2. No, and uh, and speaking to Leon before the before the fight in Salt Lake and sit, and certainly afterwards as well, when I was sitting down with him chatting, he was like, you know what, the head kick, yeah, now I think about it, I did dream about it, he said, but to be honest, I thought I was going to sub him. Mm. He, re he, he knows that Kamara has got, you know, some frailties with his ground. His wrestling's incredible. His yeah. jiu-jitsu's not that good. His jiu-jitsu's no. not at that level. And if Leon can take us back, as we've seen in Salt Lake City, he threatened the submission there. It was a little bit late in the round, a little bit tighter. Who knows? Who knows what could have happened? And also... Leon was was he gassed, he gassed in that second round. That will not happen in London. The adrenaline alone will keep him going in London at a completely different pace. That might make him gas out, though, if I'm honest. I'm not saying Leon's going to gas out, but the adrenaline, if you mm. don't know how to handle those nerves and, and that feeling... You get a dump, don't you? The, yeah, yeah. the, the adrenaline, I mean, it's going to be wild when he walks out there. Yeah. It really is. And he when, will they, get a dump. when they go face-to-face -face in the middle of, of the octagon, the crowd, the roar is going to be ridiculous. So, oh, yeah, you, you've, you've got to but, know how to handle that. But you when you're I mean? not at altitude... You get that wall quicker. You're able to go through that wall quicker. When you're at altitude, mm. the wall, you can't even see the wall because you just can't fill your lungs up with air. I think it's going to be a completely different fight. Completely mm. different fight. There you go. There you go. Main event, Leon Edwards, Kamara Usman for the welterweight championship of the world. We're not finished. This is, this is quite, it's quite packed, this. Should we do call men, boys and girls? <sighs> Let's get stuck in because, of course, we're heading to the lightweight division this time. We've got Justin Gaethje on British soil taking on Afael Fiziev. What a fight this is going to be. Yeah, listen, Justin Gage is just an incredible fighter. He's one of the fan favourites for a reason. Every time he steps foot in there, it's all out violence, let's be honest. He's a great wrestler, he never uses it. He's an amazing boxer, walks forward, takes a lot of shots, kind of out-toughs his opponents. And against Rafael Fazeev, one of the best strikers that we've ever seen in the UFC. Ever since he signed, I had a, an eye on this guy. And he's got some of the best striking, some of the best Muay Thai. He's so fast, so explosive. The reflexes are ridiculous. The leg kicks, the head kicks, the spinning wheel kicks. I mean, you name it, this man has... It. Can he stand with Justin Gagey? 100%. Who will fall first? I don't know, but somebody will. That's guaranteed. Justin and Kamaru train with each other. Correct. I forgot about that a second ago. That's a big thing here. They're could be training. a tough night for Trevor Whitman. <clears throat> it could be a great night. It could be a tough night. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But they're training together. That's one of the best training partners that money can buy. They're training together yeah. in Colorado. They're flying out here together as a team. And Justin Gagey, he never uses his wrestling because he just uses the striking. And it's sometimes, if I'm coaching him, very frustrating. But my God, if you're sitting there watching it, it is so exciting. Yeah, listen, the guy's been... Well, not shortlisted. He's actually won fight of the year on numerous occasions. Even before he came to the UFC, he was a human highlight reel. He's always had that fighting style. But at some stage, that style catches up with you, Mike. You it can't does, yeah. just fight with your face, take one to land one. Tony Ferguson. Exactly. At with some respect. stage in your career, you start to slow down. I think we've seen that now. Yes, he's lost to two of the best guys in this division. He's lost two title fights, Habib and to Charlie Olives. But we have, he's not active no more as well. You know, I think he's starting to show miles on the clock and he's running into a guy in the most stacked division in the UFC. Fazeev looks like the guy. And with all due respect, Fazeev's got some of the best kickboxing, tie boxing in the UFC period. That's not a guy you want to stand with. When you've, got, when you've been battered around a little bit? I remember watching Fazeev, the first time I commentated one of his fights doing research on him, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The speed, the reflexes, the technique, the yeah. way he throws his kicks. I mean, that time he leaned back oh, and avoided that full kick. Metrics. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it, yeah. what this man can do, the power that he has, the speed of his kicks is absolutely ridiculous. And I re remember when he fought Marjorie Casey. Marjorie Casey's an amazing fighter. He's yeah. a freak athlete. He's so explosive, so fast and so technical. And... Fazeev beat him at his own game. Mm. You know what I mean? It's it's he's an incredible yeah. fighter. There's going to be a point in this in this division particularly where this new breed that we're always talking about yep. take over from Correct. some of the tried and tested. Gaethje is one of the tried and tested guys in this yep. division. Do you feel that this could be the fight that starts to see the likes of Fazeev starting to take over and become? the new top boys. Yeah, I think we're already seeing it. I think we're seeing the likes of Benil Darius coming through and Fazeev coming through and all these other guys who are... They, listen, it's so deep. Go right down to number yeah. 20 in the rankings and number 20 would have a good go against number one. That's, yeah. how, that's how solid it is. But with all due respect, the Gaethje's, the Poiriers, the Tony Ferguson's, these guys have been around the title for a long time. 
it feels like the changing of the guard and this feels like a fight where Fazeev will have his breakout moments. Don't get me wrong, Gaethje's still one of the best guys in the world and there's no way you can write him off. Mm. But Fazeev, you talk about Gaethje being the human highlight reel. The dude's on a six fight win run. Five of those have been performance of the night bonuses. <laughs> He's the new highlight reel of the, high, high, of the lightweight division. And look at the way he knocked out Brad Riddell. You know, a tough fight, fifth round, spinning wheel kick, yeah. knocked him out. RDA you know. two, power, RDA. right until the last round, he's carrying power yep. deep into fights. That's dangerous, especially with Gaethje fighting with his and face. And Gaethje takes a lot of shots. Exactly. I mean, as you said, and against Fazeev, you don't want to do that. You know, we might see him turn into a wrestler, but I don't think we how, will. How, how many times we, have we said that? Don't I know, I know, he should use his wrestling. Yeah. This is the one fight where Gaethje needs to wrestle. And I'm sure Trevor Whitman is going crazy. Yeah. Will you just wrestle? For the love think, of God, <laughs> will you shoot a double leg takedown? But is that Please. What, is that what they're doing now in camp? Where they're just going, right, you're wrestling Kamaru, you're wrestling Justin Gaethje. That's it. We will wrestle our way to victory in London. Is that what they're doing, do you think? Because that be. seems to be it the obvious game plan. Be. It should be, but, you know, we have egos. As do, fighters, you yeah. get in there and you want to prove that you can stand, you want to prove that you can beat this guy. And that's what makes these fights amazing. And yeah. that's why Justin Gaethje goes off the game plan. Um, now listen, we're going to talk about, there's a lot of top fights on the whole of this card, so I'm just going to sprinkle a few in, wax lyrical boys, get stuck into him, right? I'm going to start wax. with Marvin Vittori against oh. Roman Delizzi, because it kind of feels natural to go from the violence that we've just been speaking about to that particular fight, Mike. Big one. Well, that's the main card opener, and what yeah. a fight it is. I mean, Marvin Vittori, he didn't get the job done last time against Robert Whittaker, but what a fight that was, and that was the best version of Robert Whittaker I think we've ever yes. seen. The fight before that against Paolo Costa, let's remember, Paolo came in 20 pounds heavy, looked yeah. phenomenal, phenomenal. I mean, and, and the shots Marvin Vittori took and then fired by, Ooh. I called that fight and I couldn't believe what I was seeing, what I was witnessing, because we're in the apex now. The shots that Marvin was taking and landing was echoing around this arena. But of course, Roman De Lidze, I mean, he's a, he's kind of coming into his own. He's a finishing machine now, finished the last two by first round. Finishes, one submission, one knockout. Yeah, the man's special. This is a great fight. Yeah, Delizzi's the full package, man. All he's missing is a name. He's missing yeah, a real yeah. name in this yeah. middleweight division to draw a line in the sand and go, I'm worthy of a title opportunity or I'm certainly worthy of a high ranking. He gets that here, but I just don't know if it's the right fight for him, man. Mavatori out in Paris and everything else. He's just got so much energy behind him. We forget how young he is. He's such a young guy. Yeah. He's only in his 20s. Mm -hmm. And he's got so much experience. He's been out here based with uh, Rafael Cordero for a number of years. He's completely rounded out his game. I know he lost to Whitaker, but I would argue Whitaker probably is the most the most complete fighter in the middleweight yeah. division. He's peaking right now. There's no shame in that. He will learn from that. And I think we're going to see him bounce back and bounce back in style. It's going to be a fun fight, though, because both men are kind of brutish. You yes. know, but, but, but when you look at Whitaker. I mean, he's so technical. We were talking about his footwork. And even that night, Mar Marvin, right after the fight came over to me, we had a little chat. He was so honest. He said, I just couldn't, I just couldn't do anything, man. Mm, he said, yeah. I've never experienced that. Because he's not as light on the feet as what Robert is. But that's why this fight is going to be great. Because yeah. Roman Delidza, again, big, strong guy, good boxer, good submissions. But he, he's not like a Muhammad Ali in there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And neither is Marvin Vittori. They're exactly. going to clash in the centre of the octagon. And they're going to throw down and it's going to be wild. And then we've got a young lady that we're claiming as a Rom because she's Scottish, technically. Yeah. Even though, obviously, she'll be announced as Australian, but she's technically Scottish in Casey O'Neill. Uh, and taking on former title contender in Jennifer Meyer, a big opportunity for her. Yeah, that's right. Let's remember Jennifer Meyer sadly was the lady that ended the title fight, Dreams of Joanne Calderwood. Great jiu-jitsu. Actually gave Shevchenko a pretty decent fight. Mm, had, yeah. had a little bit of success there. A strong grappler. Casey O'Neill very well-rounded, as you say, fighting out of Australia, but representing Scotland at the same time. Always exciting. And she's nasty as well. Mm. I love what she brings to the table inactive though only that's one last year that's the problem you know when you're a young girl like that when you're looking for big experiences when you want to climb the rankings you want to be busy this is the opportunity she's been dreaming of a former title contender in the uk all the support's going to be for her but it's a big step up as well for someone who hasn't been that active yeah right what do you make of Gunnar Nelson versus Brian Barberena, which is a, a fight that's come together on short notice? I like the fight because it's, I think it's better than the original opponent. I like the fact that Barberena's come in. It's a, he's a game opponent. He will fly at him. Uh, I think Gunnar likes that as well. You know, we haven't seen too much of Gunnar. He had a couple of years out of the sport. He came back last March at the O2. Nice big win for him there. Gets back into the groove. You know, if he can put, he's funny Gunnar because he refuses to cut weight. So he's kind of always lost in this welterweight division. He's more of a lightweight, really, when you look at how people cut weight. But you can't deny how talented Gunnar mm. Nelson is. You're on the ground, absolutely outstanding submission mm. fighter. And I think it is a, a, basically a tale of two styles here. Barbarina, 
is a warrior. He likes to come forward, throw heavy shots, keep the fight standing, uh, and prove himself through outwill people. Whereas Gunny, of course, always looking for the takedown, very much a technical fighter. So I think there's a real good contrast in styles, but I'll tell you what, I think the fans are gonna love it because I think Barbarena brings that energy. And yeah, Gunner's no, just does. so cool. Like everyone loves Gunnar Nelson. Like every time he always fights in London. You know what? I would argue. Is Gunny the most active fighter that we've seen at the O2? Yeah. He seems to be on the O2 cards all the time. So and he's always main card. And you know why? Because everyone loves him. Yeah. yeah. But he's got to deliver. Yeah. I mean, everyone yeah. knows about the potential, or not the potential, the skill and the quality that Gunnar Nelson is. I and mean, we all know about the grappling. It's phenomenal. It's some of the best we've seen in the UFC. Yeah. But he's losing the odd one here and there. So I yeah. guess Brian Barberena, on paper, this is an opponent kind of tailor-made for him because yeah. Barbarena hasn't got the grappling, hasn't got the jiu-jitsu and will engage in, in a kind of brawling style of fight, mm. which will open possibilities for the takedown. But, you know, he's got to make sure he does it. He's got to, he's got to, mm -hmm. he's got to deliver. How much uh, pressure is Joanne Wood under, do you think? She's facing an opponent that a lot of British fans will be familiar with from last year yeah. off the back of that spinning elbow. Yeah. Uh, Carolina, Lu Luana Carolina obviously was on the receiving end of uh, Molly's, Molly's elbow, elbow. But there's a lot of pressure on Joanne. Obviously, she's going through a bit of a sticky patch at the moment and people will be comparing that last fight last year and thinking, well, Joanne's a great striker. She should be lighting this kid up. Yeah, I'm really intrigued by this one because... You know, Jojo's a mainstay and she's a bit of a pioneer for British women inside the octagon. Phenomenal career. But three or four fights ago, she was the number one contender. Yeah. She was right there. She was about to face Valentina. She could have sat on, sat on the sides and went, I'll just wait for my opportunity. She didn't. She went into a fight. Unfortunately, she lost that fight. This could I, be a make be or break honest, fight. It is a make or break fight, look, though. Look at her last fight, Alexa Grasso. She's not losing to scrubs. You know what I mean? She's, oh, yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, losing, yeah. she's only lost to the best in the, in the division. Yeah. She's a great fight. She brings it every time. She's got beautiful kickboxing. Maybe come up short a few times with the grappling side of things. But in this one, I don't think that's going to be... Uh, an issue. And she'll feed off the energy of the crowd. She's popular, isn't she? You know what I mean? Yeah, the crowd, she's the massively crowd be... popular. And, and honestly, I believe, I truly believe she's jumped at this opportunity to springboard herself. She knows she's had a bad run. She knows she needs to put them losses behind her. She needs to focus on her career because she's not getting any young. I think she's 36 yeah. now, Joe. Apologies for out on her age. But she needs to put a run together. But she knows two, three wins, she's back. And then entire career, she can always... Otherwise, she'll kick herself and go... I never got that tight opportunity. Who knows? As Mike knows, she needs that resilience to go, believe in herself, start with a win here, two or three wins later, she's fighting for the title. But then again, that adds a lot of pressure, you know, because she yes. knows that situation. She knows she's lost a couple. She knows she hasn't fought in England for a while. Yeah. And that's, so mm -hmm. it's how you handle those pressure. It can, it can make diamonds or it can make you crumble. As they say. Mm -hmm. Make diamonds or make you crumble. I like that. That was, oh, yeah. that was lovely. That was lovely. There Let's, we go. Shall we talk featherweights? Um, I'm really interested in this one. Obviously, Jack Shaw is coming up in way. Yes. Uh, uh, Makwan Amirkani is the man. Talk about O2 familiar. Yeah, yes, yes, he's Every exactly single time. Cards, yeah. He's always on the card. Yeah. Um, but this division's getting really hot right now. And obviously, Jack stepping in there is another little, lo lovely little bit of spice to get excited about from a British point of view in this division. Yeah, and listen, you've got to look at what Nathaniel Wood's done since he's moved up to featherweight as well. It's completely and utterly revitalised his entire career. He's looked phenomenal. Mm. Devastated, of course, he's not on this card. Supposedly, we got supposed to fight Lerone Murphy. He got injured, unfortunately. Um, but Jack needs to take inspiration from that. Believe me, Jack Shaw, will. I be truly believe he will fight for the UFC title one day. I think last time out, he picks up that loss against Ricky Simon. I think he realised then, you know what? I've been killing myself to make bantamweight for all the wrong reasons. Mm. I need to go back to featherweight where he started his career. Talent-wise, Jack Shaw takes every oh, single box. It's, it's ridiculous. Stand-up's amazing. Ground game's amazing. I, I said he's the Welsh George St. Pierre. Yep. He really is. I mean, the, the, the technical ability that he has, the wrestling, the jiu-jitsu, and of course the striking, is the complete package. And I agree with you. I do believe getting down to bantamweight has a negative effect. Yep. Revitalised, reinvented, 145. Who's he fighting again? Michael Amir Khan. Khan. I, I, Who loves to spoil the party, let's be honest. He, he, know, he knows he, 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 he's very yeah, exciting yeah. as well. He'll yeah. run out, he'll start with a flying knee or whatever. Yeah. So it's going to be a fun one. Mohamed Mokayev. Let's talk about him because he's putting pressure on himself, is Moe, he's trying to become the youngest UFC champion of all time. I think the day is next March mm -hmm. that he's got to get all this done by. With all due respect to the level of opponent that he's fighting at UFC 286, I don't think that kicks him any further no. up the rankings. No. So it's going to be interesting to see the level of performance uh, against Filio and what he says on the microphone afterwards when he's calling out. Yeah, and don't forget last time as well, you know, 
again, mo multiple time IMAF world champion in the amateurs, sensational talent. You know, trains out in Bahrain and trains in the Northwest. He's got the best coaches all around the world. You know, this guy is being built to become the uh, next UFC champion. But he just needs to pump the brakes a little bit. He's getting a little bit carried away. He's talking about this title fight more than he's talking about his next opponent. Mm. And last time you seen him in London, that late submission pulled him out. He was losing. He was going to lose that fight that on the Malcolm cards. That was Gordon, right? Yeah, and he yeah. pulled it out the bag. He pulled the submission out. Hey, that's the sign of a great fight. I ain't knocking him for it, but just focus on your next fight. Just win your next fight. And listen, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Don't get hung up on that date. Yeah, and, the, and there's a bit of a difference between Volkanovski and Malcolm Gordon. Correct. With respect. But Makaev, listen, you know, so far undefeated, right? He's, yeah. He's, he's perfect, you know. Technically, very, very sound and still a young man. Yeah, the, listen, opportunities come quick in the flyweight division. I, I, I realise that, especially put a run together. But just, listen, let it happen, Mo. Just let it happen. Hopefully he lets it happen on Saturday night. Um, interesting matchup, that one. Well, of course, we've got... Um, Jake Hadley, who is Mo Makahev's friend, yeah. let's just say. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be a bit of spice in the fighter hotel throughout the course of the week. And he's taking on one of Mohamed Makahev's former opponents in Malcolm Gordon. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's a nice opportunity for him to make a bit of a statement against Mo and build that yeah. rivalry up. I think it almost feels inevitable that they're going to fight each other. I know Mo's trying to look up the rankings, but Hadley's picking the right guy to choose a fight with because you want that local rivalry, you want that... UK versus UK kind of fight. You know, again, we almost got it here on this card with the featherweight division. And who's to know if the UFC come back to the UK later in the year or even next year, Hadley could get that opportunity. Nick's on fire. <laughs> Nick's on fire. I'm just I'm saying, I'm just, I'm just well. watching you. I'm like, you're amazing at this, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the Black Country banger. Oh. We've got Jai Herbert taking on Ludovic Klein. Last, listen, he's, he's had a bit of a sketchy time, hasn't he, in, in the USA, let's be honest. And the matchups that he has been given, yeah, Jai Herbert, not exactly. have been tough. I mean, last time out, he went up against a good wrestler in Kyle Nelson, got the job done. Before that, Ilya Taporia in a sensational fight. Yes, granted, yeah. it ended very badly for him, but yeah. he almost got the, 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 the victory, almost got the knockout himself at Ilya Taporia in all kinds of trouble. I mean, mm -hmm. he's so technical. You can see the work, you can see the similarities between Jai and Leon Edwards, obviously their training partners, and going up against Ludovic Klein. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, this is going to be a great fight. And he'll be feeding off the energy of Leon. You, you can tell, oh, actually, you can tell as well, can't you? Like the way that you, when you speak to Jai, he is, being around Leon and seeing the rise of Leon, mm -hmm. he's having an effect on him. And we saw that in his performance last time out. Yeah, and listen, there's no shame in losing to Ilya Tapora. Yeah. He is going to no. be a champion one day. That kid is absolutely special. So yeah, listen, being, doing the entire camp with Leon, it's different when you tra your training partner goes on and achieves the dreams that you've got, because then you go, wait a minute, eats in the same restaurants I eat in. He does the same sessions I do. He does the same sport and I do. We train together. If he can do it, I can do it. And I think we'll see a, a brand new version of Jai Herbert on Saturday. Before I go through the individuals that are making USC debuts, I just want to come back to your career. Okay. As a, as a Brit, making your first appearance in the UFC in front of British fight fans. Just... Recollect some of those memories. Well, What's that like? Well, the first time I did it, UFC 70, uh, when I fought Elvis Sinisic, it was Crow Corp versus... So old. Man. I know. <laughs> so old, I know, man. UFC 70, my <laughs> word. I made my debut at 66. <laughs> that is old school. Um, no, but I remember when I walked out, and I've told this story a few times, but when I walked out and I had no idea I was getting the support, and this is what they, they're going to experience on Saturday night when they walk out there and the crowd goes absolutely mental. Yep. The adrenaline just flew right to my head and I was off my tits on, on adrenaline I was and I just sprinted I just pushed everyone aside like, let me at him and I started sprinting to the octagon I tried running in the cage like whoa, whoa, what are you doing you're not you didn't even take your shoes off get, get, get your trainers off get your hoodie off put your mouthpiece in what are you doing I'm, and I didn't know what I was doing because the adrenaline yeah. nothing can prepare you for that nothing and yeah. I'm excited for all these people making that walk and there's a few of them. So we'll start yeah. with Sam Patterson, shall we? Because obviously a young man, Dana White's contender series in this very apex where yeah. he got his uh, award to be uh, a UFC fighter and he gets the opportunity to perform in front of his home fans. Yeah, and listen, for him, it's going to be something a little bit different because he's spent most of his career fighting overseas. Mm. You know, he, he fights uh, the, the promotion out of Bahrain. He's been all over the world, fought in Russia, everywhere else. So for him, coming back to the UK, to make his UFC debut was going to be a little bit special for him, but talent-wise, kid has got everything. So dynamic, really good on his feet, good ground game. As Mike said, for a few of these guys, it's just about who can handle the moment. They're all talented, but can you handle the big show? And Christian Leroy Duncan? This is the guy. 
This is the guy. <laughs> Talk about, I, I was uh, talking earlier about IMAF World Championships mm. and Mo Mokhaev. This guy represented uh, England at the World Championships as well. Super talented, taekwondo background, spinning kicks, you name it. The crowd are gonna go berserk when he comes out because I believe he could steal the show. He's my tip for a cheeky little oh. knockout performance bonus early on. So there you have it, it's gonna be a busy one. We've of course got our live show for the weigh-ins as these boys and girls hit the scales on Saturday. That's right, tuxedos are coming out, ladies oh. and gentlemen, because we are going to be bringing you an extra special live programme from the O2 Arena, and Tom Aspinall will be joining us for that as well. And then straight after all the event, we'll, of course, debrief and go over everything that we've seen from the O2 Arena. Don't forget, the prelims get going from 7pm, available on BT Sport 1 and the YouTube channel. And then, of course, main card on BT Sport Box Office from nine. Head to bt.com slash sport box office for more information on that. The welterweight title is on the line. It's happening on British soil. You do not want to miss it. We'll see you soon. Welcome to BT Sport Box Office. Anyone can enjoy a BT Sport Box Office event and you don't have to be a BT Sport customer, have a BT ID or a BT Sport login to do so. Here's how to buy using the BT Sport Box Office app. Follow the registration sign-up process and create an account. Once you're logged in, select the event you wish to watch and follow the instructions to purchase. You can pay with a credit or debit card and through your EE, O2 or 3 mobile bill. But if you've bought a BT Sport box office event before and already have an account, simply log in to bt.com forward slash sport box office and select the event you wish to buy. Once you've bought the event online, download the BT Sport box office app to your mobile or tablet. You can also access the event online through our web player or to view on your TV, you can cast the app using Chromecast or AirPlay on supported devices. And finally, remember you only need to pay online if you want to watch the event on the BT Sport box office app. Enjoy the show.